In this short video, we'll explore how to set up the Digilent analog discovery device to operate as a curve tracer for transistors. Let's start by identifying the required components. We'll need a breadboard to connect everything together. And for this video, we'll be using an older device known as the Analog Discovery Legacy. I believe it's two generations older than what they're currently offering, but it will still provide all the functionality we need. The test transistor will be a TIP41. And next to it, you can see a 100 ohm and a 10K ohm resistor. And on the bottom of the screen, you'll see some headers that will allow the analog to discovery to be easily connected to the breadboard. This is a close up of the breadboard before we connect the test equipment. From the data sheet, we see that the TIP41 transistor, when viewed from the front, left to right, has a base collector emitter pinout. From this picture, you can just make out that the upper resistor is the 10K, the middle is the 100 ohm, and then of course the jumper is on the emitter. This picture shows how the analog discovery is connected to the breadboard. You'll notice that there are seven connections. To get started, we launch the Waveforms software. And then we head down here to Tracer. Next, we need to select that we do not have an adapter. At the end of the video, I'll show you what the Digilent adapter is. Uh, for now, we need to pay attention to this little picture right here, as this shows how to connect the various wires to the transistor. Notice the two resistors here. So the base resistor, which is our 10K ohm resistor, connects to W2 output. The collector resistor, which in this case is 100 ohms, has two connections going to W1 and 1 plus. It also has connections to 2 plus and 1 minus. Again, those are all connections on the analog discovery device. There are two additional connections here. You'll notice that there's ground and then two negative. So in total, there are seven connections required. Once your transistor is connected, you can come here and select run. And if all goes well, you should be greeted with the transistor curves. On the horizontal is the collector voltage. On the vertical is the collector current. You can see that right here as collector current and then the voltage collector to emitter. And each of these lines is roughly equivalent to the base voltage. The way this works is we take the W2 here and we set it to a particular voltage and then you swing the voltage on W1 and you see what the response is. For this line right here, we've held the base voltage, which is to say W2, at 2.5 volts. And then we've swung the voltage here on W1 from 5 volts uh, down to zero, and this is the resulting curve. From your transistor theory, you know that the base emitter voltage will be approximately 0.6 volts. Therefore, if we put in, for example, 2.5 volts, there will be a constant voltage drop across this resistor, which means that each of these lines effectively is a constant current. If we were to estimate that current, we might say 2.5 volts minus 0.6 and then divide by 10,000. The calculation suggests that this line right here represents a base current of 190 microamps. Again, that's 2.5 volts applied to this part of the base resistor, minus 0.6, which is the voltage base to emitter, and that's divided by 10K. You'll notice that these lines are mostly horizontal, and that's more or less to be expected. 
what it indicates is that for a given base current, there will be a corresponding collector current. And that, of course, is the gain of the transistor. Before departing, I should mention that the TIP41 is a power transistor. It's capable of somewhere around 6 amps or even 10 amps in pulsed applications. You can see here that at 9 milliamps, we're barely even turning it on. This is the transistor tester adapter I mentioned earlier in the video. This might be a useful adapter if you're testing a lot of transistors or if you're performing transistor matching. And those are all topics for future videos.